Whew, it's 2024 already. It's hard to believe how fast the years kind of roll by. Now, I've been pretty busy over the holiday season with even some birthdays thrown in there, so I haven't really had time to flush out the test bench for season six of the fan shutdown, but although I've been slacking, you guys have not. So today we're going to see what you guys have been up to on a new fan showdown, season five, episode 11. Have you ever just sat and stared into the empty black void of your smartphone, wishing there was something you could do with it other than make phone calls? Me too. With all that computing power in the palm of your hands, it's hard to believe that nobody has come up with a better solution than just making phone calls with this mobile communication device. Well, someone did. Raid Shadow Legends. No longer must you use your mobile communicator for only talking to robocallers. Now you can use it as a powerful gaming device. Raid Shadow Legends is available both on PC and mobile. With over 800 champions ranging from lizard people to elves to orcs to dwarves and demons, each with their own unique look. If that already sounds like a great idea to you, scan my QR code or check out the link in the description below and get in on the action. For example, check out The Cursed City, one of Raid's biggest features since the Doom Tower, with 100 stages to complete, including stages where you need to take down two Raid bosses at the same time. There is no time like the present to hunker down inside your house and jump into Raid like the mythical champions, which are basically two champions in one. You can change forms with a unique metamorph skill, and if you think they look cool, just wait and see what these new champions can do in Raid Shadow Legends adding a new dynamic to your party. Now, if you haven't started playing, you can use my link in the description below or scan the QR code on the screen to get some unique bonuses such as silver, XP brews, and chicken. After you download Raid Shadow Legends using my link in the description below, make sure you join my clan and we'll be legends together. And thank you to Raid for sponsoring today's video. Welcome back. First up today, we have David and his fan, Rocket Ship. Now, I'm not sure what you are thinking when looking at the design for the first time, but whatever it is, I'm pretty sure it's close to what David also had in mind. Ew. David said he wanted to design his blades as a series of nose cones connected by a thin web. David has always been fascinated by rockets and rocket nose cones and aerodynamics and said he wanted to tie all that together into his fan design. Now, as soon as I saw what he said about his design, the first thing I thought of was Starship. Elon Musk famously said that he asked his engineers to make the rocket more pointy because of the movie Dictator. It is too round on the top, it needs to be pointy. Which I find absolutely hilarious. Now when asked, is it better to be pointier? Like if, if it wasn't for the it's movie. It's arguably slightly worse, but like. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm not a rocket engineer, I'm, I'm far from it. If there was a graph that showed the normal distribution of the population and their rocket knowledge, I would definitely fall on the left side of that graph. But that being said, for the most part, a pointier rocket tends to be better. When's the last time you've seen a rocket that was shaped like a school bus? For most of us normies, we know that this is because a pointier nose is much more aerodynamic than a blunt nose, reducing the drag on the rocket, making it more efficient as it punches its way through the, the lower parts of the atmosphere. However, once you reach max Q, this becomes less and less of a concern until the rocket reaches space where the shape of the nose doesn't matter at all. It could be a, a school bus, the rocket doesn't care. This is why you see rockets such as Falcon 9 jettison the nose cone covering the payload before it reaches its target orbit. Once the rocket reaches a high enough altitude entering space, the nose cone becomes more of a hindrance than anything else as it's no longer protecting the payload from those aerodynamic forces, causing the rocket to be less efficient as it now has to move the mass of the payload and the nose cone, aka fairing. So they just toss it. Now, David's fans' nose cones are a bit on the blunter side of things. How this will affect the fan's performance, I don't know. It's, it's not a rocket. Maybe, maybe blunter's better on a fan. But if SpaceX has taught us anything, pointy is scary. Next up, we have the pressurizer created by Bear Curb 314 Now, this is an interesting design. Bear Curb said that he was going for a unique design with inspiration from a jet engine compressor. The idea was to have the fan grab and trap as much air as possible by using a whole bunch of small little blades to hopefully produce higher static pressure, aiding in the fan's ability to push air through a radiator. Now the blades on the outside, the outer diameter, are pretty normal. They do have a high AOA and there's quite a few of them, but other than that, they're, they're pretty normal. The blades along the inner edge bordering the hub are more like the blades you'd find in a blower fan. And if we look at the back of this fan, you'll notice that the inner blades are completely blocked off. Instead, they exhaust their air into the outer blades. 
This is a pretty unique design choice and one we'll have to really pay attention to in the uh, smoke test to see if it's actually functioning as intended. Is it even able to move air? Uh, I'm, I'm not sold just yet. Either way though, it looks pretty cool. So again, points for that. Next up, we have Chandra and their fan, Spooky Star. Now, one thing I noticed right out of the gate when I pulled this thing off my printer is it's kind of a pain to handle. The Spooky Star is comprised of three levels of small, super sharp blades that if you're not careful when you grab this thing, it will it'll give you quite a poke. Giggity giggity. Now, Chandra didn't give me much information on this design and how it came to be, but based on the name, I think we're, I think we can confidently say it's probably a star. Now, I'm not sure where the spooky part fits in there, but you know, based on my experience using it and being impatient grabbing it before it stops spinning, I would assume that has to do with the sinister aspect of maybe mauling your unsuspecting fingers. Now last up, we have a fan whose design is relatively intriguing. This is the Whaleoid and it was created by Gary and right out of the gate, you can see that classic toroidal blade shape, blade design, blade. Toroidal's a hard word, I, it, my tongue just, uh, toroidal, it doesn't like it. Now for a moment in time, these toroidal shaped fan blades were kind of a big deal on YouTube. They were going, they were going gangbusters. MIT released a paper talking about how they tested toroidal shaped propellers in drones and noticed that they reduced the overall sound level of the drones by quite a, quite a bit. After that paper was shared, I myself and a, and a lot of you out there created a toroidal type fan. And you know, I did, the one I made did show a reduction in higher frequencies, which did align with MIT's findings. But other than that, it was, it was pretty standard. It, it didn't perform all that well. Now, Gary took that design idea one step further by adding tubercles to it. Now, there are many animals out there in the wild that have tubercles, but the one that everyone's most familiar with are the humpback whales. Tubercles are small rounded structures most commonly found on the leading edge of the whale's pectoral fins. They are evenly spaced, they can vary in size, and these structures are thought to play a role in enhancing the hydrodynamics of the whale fin. These leading edge tubercles have actually been studied for quite a long time for their possible aerodynamic properties. There are even some companies that have been testing these on wind turbines with benefits observed such as reduced turbulence and noise, increased efficiency at higher wind speeds, wider operational ranges, and increased performance in turbulent winds. Now, I wasn't able to find any examples of these tubercle wind turbines being used in a commercial wind farms, but they do continue to research them, so maybe sooner than later, we'll start seeing huge whale fin turbines dotting the landscape. Gary's hoping using the noise reducing toroidal blade shape along with tubercles maybe will further enhance the acoustical profile, acoustical? Acoustic profile of his uh, fan. So this is one we're gonna have to pay attention to in the sound test. I don't know exactly how well it's going to perform in the performance test, at least when considering how poorly mine did, but it might sound exceptionally good. So keep, a, keep an ear out. Speaking of sound, let's uh, let's see what's what. The Spooky Star came in around 53.2 dBA. The Pressurizer came in around 53.5. The Rocket Ship came in around 48.9. And the Whaleoid came in around 51. So in my testing, the, uh, the Rocket Ship actually did better than the Whaleoid, uh, which is interesting. The Whaleoid did have a quite substantial spike in the lower frequency, which did hurt it quite a bit. So right now it looks like, you know, the <laughs> the Starship is gonna come from behind for, for the wind. But we'll have to see if that great acoustic profile will produce exceptional airflow. Again, based on the smoke test, this thing's looking pretty, pretty strong. 
Let's see if we can take it home. The rocket ship came in at 350 feet per minute of airflow. The pressurizer came in at 237. The spooky star came in around 234, kinda. It was like fluctuating between zero and 234. So I think 234 is as low as my anemometer can read. So we'll like say 230. And the whaleoid came in around 356. Placing the whaleoid in first place, the rocket ship in second, the pressurizer in third, and the spooky star in fourth. Overall, they finished 26th, 28th, 44th, and 46th. Now, if you want to get in on the action, make sure to head down to the description below where there'll be some links to resources you can use to help design your fan for the next fan showdown. Down there, you can also find links to my Thingiverse page where I have some resources showing you the dimensions you got to hit to make sure your fan fits in the A12 X25 frame. There's also some examples you can use to help you get you started, like 3D model examples. And once your design is finished, make sure to send me a .stl or a step model to the fan showdown at gmail.com and we'll see your fan in the next episode, maybe season six of the Fan Showdown. Till next time.